Yeah, um, I want to talk about inventory and stabilization over digital channels. I'm Mohammed. I want to thank the organizer um, for making this happen. Also, thanks Christoph for the introduction. Um, so this is the outline of the talk. I'm going to talk about some the general definition, like cyber physical system and uh, data rate theorem. And then uh, next, I'm going to jump um, and talk about the event triggering stabilization. I will go over a scalar system, some demo um, implementation. The, I will have a discussion about Xeno behavior, uh, then event triggering versus time triggering and extension to vector system, uh, exponential convergence, and some uh, couple of open problems that I think it's uh, worth some attention. So let us start with the, uh, just some introduction. So we have the, this state, this cyber physical system that are largely regarded as the next generation of engineering system. They integrate uh, communication, computation and control together and they arise in diverse area uh, such as robotic, energy and transportation. Uh, so, Cloud robotic and automation system is an example of the cyber physical system, which is an emerging field in robotic and automation. The cloud enable the robot to show, uh, to use many shared resources such as machine learning, big data, and many other shared resources to enhance their performances. And in many cases uh, in this setup, the feedback loop is closed over a communication channel, which could be uh, both noisy and subject to delay, and we need to guarantee the stability or safe operation of this system while we have the feedback loop closed, uh, being closed over the communication channel. So I will start with the very low complexity model, and then we build up uh, little by little to more and more complex scenario. So we have a network control system when the feedback loop between the sensor and controller is closed over the communication channel. Uh, which is subjected to finite data rate and delay. And this is the plant for now. It's an a scalar with dynamic x dot equal to axt plus but plus wt. And wt is the system disturbances, which we assume to be bonded at all time m. U is the control input that the controller inject to the plant. And x is the state, uh, the, the value of the state that sensor reads. Uh, we assume that the plant is unstable, so A is a positive real number. So this differential equation becomes unstable. And as I mentioned before, channel uh, is subjected to finite data rate and some unknown but bonded delay. So the main goal is to use the con concept of time information uh, in a network control system. So the sensor basically at each transmission time want to answer the question of what to transmit, what should be the data below the bits, and also when we should transmit. So the information here is not only encoded in the time, uh, not only encoded in the packet in the bits, but also in the time. And the delay is like the additive noise here to the timing. For example, here the first packet suffer from two second delay. Uh, the next one suffered from a second delay and the last one socket from a half of it, suffered from a half of a second delay. And uh, let us continue with some definition. Let TS be the transmission time at which the sensor uh, transmit a packet and let TC be the time at which that packet is received by the controller. And we assume that TC minus TS is less than equal to gamma when gamma is some positive real number. So Basically, we have the transmission time, we have the reception time, and the difference between them is always less than gamma. Uh, so anything, any uh, data payload that we transmit here is going to be received within a window of length gamma in time. And we want to distinguish between two different uh, rates by taking point of view of the sensor and controller. So for that, let be S of T be the number of bits in data payload, just zero and one, that are transmitted up to time t. Then information transmission rate, or RS, is defined as asymptotic average rate of, uh, asymptotic average of the S of t. So basically, S here is done for the sensor, and RS is the rate at which the sensor transmits just data payload, just zero and ones. 
and let BC be the time, uh, be the amount of information measured in bits included in both data payload and timing received uh, at the controller until time t. And define information access R of C as asymptotic average of BC of T. So basically, uh, RC is the information that the controller received measuring bits, both from zero and ones, and the timing together. Then in this context, we can, uh, there is a theorem uh, which called data rate theorem. Uh, many of them actually, and here is uh, one version of them uh, that we kind of generalize. And it says that we can stabilize the system, this simple system that we started uh, with for now, if and only if the information access rate, the rate at which controller receive information, either from timing or the zero and ones, should be bigger than a over ln of two. A here is just the open looking of the system and A over ln of two is a constant that is known as entropy rate of the plant and measure the instability of the plant. So intuitively what this theorem states that is that the state uncertainty over the time uh, or at unit time expand with the factor of e to the power of A and also it shrink with the factor of two to the power of minus RC and this Theorem basically states that the state should shrink faster than it expands. So basically, data rate theorem are a balance between production and consumption of information, and this information can be supplied to the controller by zero and ones by data payload, also timing. So RC bigger than A over n of two could happen, but the question that we want to mainly answering this talk is that what should be the RS? What should be the rate at which center need to uh, put zero and ones in the uh, packets basically? So I'm going to now jump to the um, uh, real results. So for doing that, um, I need to have an, a review of event triggering control. So we know that periodic control is mostly used in the current system because perhaps it's the simplest solution and maybe sometimes the easier solution. So in this picture, if you have a dog robot and you want to control it, at each step you are going to take a sample and say if the robot is in a good pass or bad pass. Uh, but this way of communicating the periodic control could be inefficient in shared uh, resources in cyber physical system when we have shared communication and computation. Uh, and because of that, event triggering control has been around and they're going to transmit sensory data only in an opportunistic manner when only when needed to communicate something. So if you look at that, the Previous example again, so the main concept is that we are going to transmit sensory data only when needed. So if we have the same dog robot and we want to control, we are going to only send a packet whenever the dog take a bad step. And maybe the main concept of event triggering control could be captured by this quote of Plato that a wise man speaks because they have something to say. So, And our goal is to, our goal here is to propose an event triggering strategy that um, utilizes timing information by transmitting an, uh, in an state dependent fashion. So we are going to send the data payload, but also at the same time, we are going to encode information in timing. And the way that we are going to do this is going to be a state dependent, uh, regularized by an event triggering strategy. So as an intuitive example, consider the stabilization of this inverted pendulum over over a communication channel. So the control goal here is to keep the pendulum at the upright position. And initially because of the noise, the pendulum may start to falls out a bit. And it continues like that, but the no triggering is going to happen because uh, a packet is only going to be transmitted in this setup whenever the angle is going to cross this red threshold shown in, this threshold shown in red. Uh, that we call the triggering threshold. So it starts falling, but no packet is transmitted and it continues like that. And then at some moment, uh, we are going to cross that a specific threshold and a packet is transmitted. Then notice here that not only the time, but also the, not only the packet, but also the time of the packet conveys information. 
uh, because the controller knows that whenever the angle is going to cross that specific threshold, a packet is going to be transmitted. So when I'm talking about stability, this is the definition uh, that I'm talking about. So we want to do this uh, event triggering stabilization to ensure that the state is input to a state uh, practical stable, meaning that uh, absolute value of xt is less than beta when beta is a KL function of the initial condition and time. So basically this means that it's a decaying function with time. So it's going to zero with time. And also plus phi of some k infinity function of the wt when phi is a k infinity function, meaning that it's zero at zero and it goes, it's increasing as wt is going to increase. And wt is the, just the supremum of the uh, disturbances over time t. And plus chi of gamma when gamma is the channel delay upper bound and psi is again a k infinity function. And again, some uh, zeta function, which is k infinity two, which means that it's k infinity in each of its, co its coordinate. So basically these terms are going to vanish if the disturbance is zero or delay is zero. And this term is an exponentially, it's a decaying function, not necessarily exponentially, but it's a decaying function with time. Um, so for the fixed gamma, if you fix the channel delay, this is going to be the definition of uh, input to a state practical stability. Uh, given, I think, first in this paper and more recent version of it is given in 2012 by Sharon and Liberson. And this is not really a, a sophisticated definition. So what it says in picture is that you, if the delay is bonded and uh, disturbance is bonded, initial condition is bonded, you just want to be bonded at all time, you know, and, and, and have some decay rate as uh, times tends to infinity. But it's just, you can think about, about the stability as just being bonded. So next I'm going to talk about SZ estimation error two. So this is the plant, x dot equal to ax plus but plus wt, and x hat is the estimation constructed at the controller. So just the estimation of x, uh, which is going to follow an emulation base uh, dynamic during the inter-triggering times and uh, from time TC to TCK plus one. And at the triggering time, it's going to have some jumps, some, uh, not jumps, some updates. Uh, SZ estimation error is going to have some jumps, which going to lead to so, some updates at the state estimation. I'm going to get to that later. So we assume that this X hat, the state estimation could also be computed at the sensor side. And this doesn't necessarily require additional feedback communication channel in the feedback loop. And it could be done by communication via control input. Uh, in fact, in this setup, we proved that if the control input knows the sensor, uh, sensor knows the control input, and also the control input only jumps at the reception time, the sensor could also calculate X hat. It's uh, by a method called communication via control input when we look at the plant as the communication uh, medium. And uh, the state estimation error is also defined as the distance between x minus x hat, which could be done at the sensor side, because we, we assume that the sensor could calculate x hat too. And we are going to use this state estimation error to define our uh, triggering policy. So basically, we are going to trigger uh, whenever the absolute value of uh, state estimation error z becomes equal to j, when j is the triggering threshold, which is just a positive number. And we assume that there is always enough uh, information in the timing as well as data payload that after the reception and update at the controller, the packet jump, uh, the SL estimation error jumps under the triggering threshold. So, uh, and since the delay is bonded in this way, the Z, the state estimation error is going to be bonded at all time too. So let me uh, describe this in picture, I think it's easier. So, so we have the state estimation error Z, it's going to increase, uh, hit the triggering threshold, a triggering happens, but uh, and a packet is going to be transmitted. And it keeps growing because of the unknown bonded delay in the channel, then the reception happens 
state estimation get updated and the estimation error jumps under the triggering function and it continues like that. And since the delay is bounded, you can ensure that with this design, Z is also bounded. So this is the uh, main theorem that we proved for this simple case. Uh, and I'm going to talk about this extension. So, so we have the information transmission rate, the rate that sensor just uh, sends zero and ones, just the bits, uh, versus gamma, the channel delay upper bound. So if you look for very small value of the delay, the timing information is substantial. And this rate that we need to send bits could be arbitrarily close to zero. Uh, and as the delay increases, the timing information becomes out of date. And uh, so RS, the rate that we are sending zero and one needs to increase. And even if the delay increases further for larger value of the delay, uh, two things happen. One is that the uncertainty at the controller become larger. And also remember that we wanted to be under the trigger in threshold at the reception time here in design, in this design case. We always want to jump under this uh, constant value. So because of that, the RS even is going to exceed the rate imposed by data rate theorem for our design. And some challenges that uh, you uh, will have to prove this result is that uh, we, we need to first study the packet size uh, and also the rate that we are going to transmit this packet size known as the triggering rate, uh, which is basically the frequency that we are going to send this chunk of bits at each time, which is basically limb sup of n divided by sum of inter-triggering times up to time n. So for a necessary condition, we need to find the lower bound on the packet size, which is basically like the uh, log base two of the measure of the uncertainty set divided by measure of the covering ball, your resolution, uh, quantization resolution. And also you need a lower bound on this frequency to, to have a necessary condition. For a sufficient condition, you need to have an encoder and enco decoder. And also this encoder is going to encode the, a quantized version of the state in the data payload as well as timing. So it, that's, that's the specific design that we have. And for the frequency, for the triggering rate, for a sufficient condition, you need an upper bound. So when you put all of this together, you will have necessary and sufficient result. And you get uh, curves like that for both necessary and sufficient condition. But I'm not going to details of it, but if you like, you. Uh, you can look at this, this paper that is published by TCNS uh, recently. So uh, I'm going to talk about some experimental validation that we have done too. So it's, uh, uh, we use the laboratory scale uh, inverted pendulum and we use its linearized model because our result for now, the result <coughs> of us is only for a linear system. Can I make and a comment? Sure, 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 yeah. Uh, can you go back to the uh, graph? Yeah. So one thing that I wanted to mention is that uh, uh, the case with uh, zero delay, right? Yeah. So the case with uh, zero delay where you can stabilize uh, with, uh, uh, with zero data rate, I think uh, uh, we should mention that uh, this has been the focus of uh, uh, some pre previous uh, pr prior work. Uh, so basically there is a paper by Kaufman and Praslavsky that yeah. has shown that in the case gamma is zero, you can stabilize at uh, uh, zero delay by using timing information. Yes. And uh, also there is another paper by uh, Liberzon yeah. uh, and co-authors, uh, I think Joao Espana and yeah. their a postdoc or student, uh, um, which has also shown that uh, in uh, in a system where uh, you have uh, one free symbol, uh, one symbol that, uh, 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 that does not incur in any cost of transmission, uh, you could transmit this uh, uh, sort of quote unquote free symbol very frequently and uh, and not transmit the symbols that you pay for uh, very rarely. And uh, 
in that case, you basically are also able to exploit the timing at which you transmit the non-free symbols to achieve this uh, uh, effectively zero rate uh, uh, stabilization result. So these are two important uh, works that basically are generalized uh, for values of delay that are non-zero, you have this transition not only for gamma zero, but also for gamma non-zero up to a critical point. And the, the other thing is that this critical point is, is actually the inverse of uh, that value A divided by log two. So it's actually log two by A, yeah. uh, which you can see uh, by considering that in a delay, log two divided by A, uh, the plant is actually producing one extra bit of uncertainty. So if you happen to wait log two over A, then whatever information you get by timing is uh, delayed in such a way that there is one extra bit of information that this timing information cannot supply and it needs to be supplied by the data payload. So that's why you have that transition point at log two over A. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, just sorry to interrupt. I just wanted to thank you. Yeah, uh, point out these two things. Yeah, and uh, but that LNF two over A, it's uh, it's only for necessary condition and for sufficient because we have a gap. It's the sufficient is going to go above uh, sooner. Yeah. yeah. Hey, Mohamed, can I also ask you a question? Sure, uh, definitely. Yeah. Maybe uh, it might be instructive if you could also explain as to why this is not a violation of the fundamental lower bounds? Uh, yes, definitely, because uh, here, uh, uh, maybe with this pen, pendulum example, so say that uh, here the, the, uh, the delay is zero, yes? Then uh, as long as uh, the packet is received, the controller knows that the angle was uh, around some theta zero, some triggering threshold that has been, our, uh, has been uh set previously and then because we know that we are within some region of theta zero if the delay is small this is going to be the implicit timing information that is given to you by the event triggering and then this result is only drawing the uh, the rate that you need to send zero and ones packets and then while you are here you just send the zero and ones very uh, sporadically sometimes uh, or at very low frequency. The fact that you receive those zero and ones is going to inform you that, aha, uh -huh, the angle was around that time if you are the controller. And that is going to be some additional information that is inherent in event triggering. Even in the, in the sum, uh, when the delay is zero, like we were like looking at, uh, Kaufman result and uh, Hespan Hall, Liberzon, uh, and Peterson, I think, paper, James, uh, might be all right, but uh, with his students, uh, then you don't need to even send a bit. You can send a, a spade symbol, which is not zero and one, but it's going to give you the timing that, that for example, the angle has been crossed at a specific threshold. So basically the, uh, the time, the additional bits that are required here are, are given by the timing. And this is just the zero and ones that we need to send. Yeah. So actually you can see this from the, your previous result. You have a result with RC that is the classic one. Uh, yes, so yeah, basically here we are compi uh, comparing our S to RC, yes. Yeah. So RC is uh, happening still, but RS, uh, RC bigger than A over N of two is happening always. The, co uh, the controller received this information in one or other way, but RS, the rate that we are sending bits is uh, very small because the rest are assured by the timing information. Is it uh, clear or? Yes, yes, yes. So, uh, and, and Daniel also has a comment. Uh, he says that. Oh, definitely. You can look at the comment. So I think, in a way, uh, the uh, what I think gives you the data rate is that you are listening. You know, you remember your your quote about the wise man for Plato. Plato says that a wise man has something to say. Uh, that's when he talks. I think the key is that 
the audience is listening, you know, the audience is always listening. There's a dedicated channel where they're listening and you are able to send uh, infinite uh, precision data. I think this is what Daniel writes in his comment. Uh, yeah, I think that's a good way of seeing it, of seeing it. Yes, yeah, yeah. So you all can basically transmit a real number through timing, yeah. Yeah, except it's corrupted by delay. It can be corrupted by delay. Yes, yes. So it's infinite, it's infinite amount of information if you have uh, instantaneous communication. And then as the delay grows, this, this value of timing is going to decrease because you have more uncertainty around it. So, so the infinite precision is we have zero delay and then little by little, all, the, all this timing information is going to, to be corrupted by the delay. Thank you. And then, uh, the uh, is there any any other question before we go to the? Okay, so we here basically we are going to see the implementation of the result in a uh, pendulum. We use the off-the-shelf component to make this this system. We have a Raspberry Pi Model Three uh, for computation and control unit and two small DC motors, motors for uh, actuation and two identical propellers. And for the reading the angle and angular velocity, we have a sensor which, is, uh, which has a three axis accelerator and three axis gyroscope. And we use a complementary filter uh, to get this data and transfer it to angle and angular velocity. And the detail of uh, this experiment is in our uh, CDC 2019 paper. And here, um, the delay upper bound is two sampling times. I think sampling time was around a microsecond. It was like the, uh, the bottleneck that are given to us by this MEM sensor. And then uh, our design says that you need to just put one bit uh, in, um, in the packet that you are going to transmit. Uh, and here is the result, basically. And here is 6,541 uh, samples happen. And only in 170 of them, uh, a packet, uh, just one bit has been transmitted. And if you look at that the information transmission rate, the rate that the sensor sends the bit, it's 8.6 bit per second, which is a smaller than the fundamental limits, the entropy rate of the system, the data rate theorem, which is 10.5, because the rest is uh, assured just by the timing. Timing information is supplying the, less, the rest the required uh, bits. M moment for your simulation. Could you explain your control policy? You linearize it. You apply a control, Sebastian control for a linearized model. Yes, yeah. And, uh, and then how does the triggering? Uh, uh, so, yeah, yeah. So we, we couldn't, uh, we couldn't uh, in, in the digital world, we could not say that the triggering is going to happen exactly when the state estimation is equal to J. But we just say that whenever it's bigger than J, uh, between J and J plus epsilon, basically, because we're going to take the sample so fast in a microsecond, and between uh, minus J and minus J minus epsilon. So basically, there is a threshold, but because we are in the digital system, we need to relax the threshold a bit. So as long as the uh, state estimation error is bigger than J, a packet is going to be transmitted. And as long as it's uh, smaller than minus J, a packet is going to be transmitted. So it's a threshold policy. Yeah. And uh, sorry, Muhammad, when you say about entropy rate of the system, I suppose you speak about the entropy rate of its linearization near the equilibrium. Exactly. Perfect. Exactly. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> And here in the next experiment, we have uh, three sampling time as the delay. 
and uh, our design says that we need to put three packet, three bits in the packet. And here is the again the stabilization. So here in this experiment, 6,333 samples happen. Only in 146 of them, we send a packet consists of three bits, three, zero, and ones. And here, because of the delay, and because we want to always back within the threshold, J or minus J, uh, the transmission rate is 23 bit per second, which is larger than what is required by uh, data rate theorem, uh, the linearized model of the nonlinear system like that. And then in the next experiment, we increase the delay to seven sampling times. And then our design says that for the sufficient uh, packet size, you need to put five bits and for the necessary, just one bit. So we wanted to see if, uh, if, if the necessary condition should be bring up or the sufficient condition should be bring down. So we run some case of experiment like that too. So we start with the five bit, what we know that it's going to work and, and then decrease it in the subsequent experiments. So this is basically uh, what happens is that, uh, So for basically for uh, uh, five bits and four bits, you you can stabilize. So this is what we predicted. This we didn't predict it, but after three bits, at least this nonlinear model with the noise become unstable. So maybe uh, maybe we need to bring down our sufficient condition and bring up the necessary condition. Yeah. And then I'm going to talk about the Zeno behavior, which is like when you study event triggering, uh, we need to give attention to it. And so in periodic control, we always take the equal distance sampling. For example, we have a signal here. We are going to take sample at a specific time interval and it's equal distancing. But when we enter the world of event triggering, we have the sporadic sampling. So sometimes we don't take any sample, sometimes we take many. And because of that, we have a hybrid automata, basically, because we, we are controlling a continuous system at discrete time instances. And uh, when you have a hybrid phenomena, the Zeno behavior is always a uh, behavior that needs to be studied and accounted for when we are modeling and analyzing this system. Uh, and it's the Zeno behavior came from uh, basically the a paradox by an ancient Greek philosopher, the Zeno of Elia, which is now a part of the modern Italy. And basically, he, this is Zeno, and he wants to reach to the other side of the an street. And the assumption is that he, he is going to do that always by taking the uh, half of the remaining uh, space. So basically, he's just going to reach half here and then look at the rest and again go to the just half of the distance and continues like that. And Zeno argued that, uh, argued that uh, under this assumption, he never should reach the uh, destination because basically he need to take infinitely many steps or infinitely many triggering maybe in our language and he's, he is going to eventually freeze. So this kind of behavior is going to happen um, when, when you work with event triggering and we need to be careful about them. For example, here we, we have a normal realization and here we have a Zeno realization. So here we have a good uh, quantization policy, basically. So we are going to hit the triggering threshold and then uh, there is enough information say in the packet and data payload that we are always like operating far from the triggering threshold. But here we have a poor design and it, we, we don't like go back close to zero. We just like operating close to the triggering threshold. Then in this case, noises and other situations such as uncertainty in the system, 
could cause such a behavior, which is a degenerate behavior, which means that we have infinite amount of triggering uh, in a finite amount of time, which could uh, freeze the vendor state in some cases. So that's something that we need to be careful about that. So when you design an uh, event triggering strategy, you want to ensure a stability, what we wanted in periodic control literature too, but at the same time, you want to rule out the Xeno behavior too. And uh, to do that, what we did, uh, we choose a constant row zero, and we say that the state estimation error uh, after the update, these values that are here, ZTC plus should be less than row zero times J. So we scale it to be farther away from the boundary. And this is going to be translated to a uniform lower bound on the inter triggering times and an upper bound on the frequency of triggering. So there is an, another additional like, complexity for event triggering design that we need to take care of it in general. So until now, I just talk about event triggering and the fundamental limits. So we basically compare our result against RC bigger than um, A over LN of two. And now we can ask that, can we compare our result against information transmission rate in a time triggering strategy too? So time event triggering, I mean, our definition is going to be both time and state dependent. And time triggering is going to be just transmission that are only time dependent. For instance, we can assume this formula for transition. So at time zero, we are going to transmit one. And then we are going to transmit the K plus one packets whenever uh, the previous packet has been transmitted. So basically TSK plus one is equal to TSK, the transmission time of the previous time, plus uh, floor of delta K divided by T. T here is the period. And delta K is just the amount of delay that this previous packet has been suffered, plus one times T. So basically, if the amount of delay that the K packet has been suffered is less than the period, then this is zero. And we have a simple periodic transmission. But if the delay become larger and larger, sometimes we wait until the previous packet has been transmitted. And then we are going to transmit at the next uh, step of the uh, period, basically. And this is very similar to our event triggering strategy because we are going to transmit the packet only after the previous packet has been received. But as you can see, there is no state here. The transmission rule is only based on time. That's why we call it time triggering. And if you look at this, so time triggering is delay dependent and not going to exploit timing information because it's not state dependent. And if you derive data rate theorem, you will see that the rate that you need to send zero and ones, uh, the packets should be bigger than A times floor of gamma divided by T plus one divided by LN of two. So A over LN of two is just the fundamental limits. It's the data rate theorem. And the rest is just because of our design and the delay. And uh, this is in a CDC paper with Pawan, uh, Jorge, and Massimo in 2017. And uh, so if we want to compare it with event triggering, uh, again, you can see that in event triggering, we are going to transmit only when we need, and we are going to exploit the timing information. So basically here, we start from zero, and, uh, and after a while, we are going to increase. But here, even if the delay is zero, we are going to start from the fundamental limits for time triggering and go up like, like an a step function, basically like a linear behavior. So we are always above the, this uh, in periodic transmission, even if we account for the delay. So, so that's the other benefit of uh, event triggering strategy with respect to time triggering strategies. That's another way of saying that. So just instead of like comparing with fundamental limits, we can compare it with uh, periodic transmission too. So until now, everything was in a scalar, but we, you can extend it to vector system too. So then the fundamental limits, the RC, the rate that the controller need to receive information in one or uh, any way. So 
either from packets or timing should be bigger than trace of A divided by ln of two. So for a continuous time system, when you go to vector, trace of A is going to capture the instability or the amount that a state is going to grow, the volume of uncertainty is going to grow over time. So the time triggering also is going to be the same, the periodic transmission that accounts for delay. Uh, same result, but just an scale for the uh, period and the delay. And then for event triggering, the question is going to be uh, harder. For example, you can start of think that even, even if you go to do a threshold based triggering policy, what norm uh, we are going to choose? Is it going to be norm two or is it going to be coordinate by coordinate? So the one that we only know the answer to for now, it's uh, just coordinate by coordinate. So we look at, at the estimation error uh, ZI and, and we are going to uh, trigger whenever the ZI estimation error for coordinate I is equal to JI. And this is basically correspond to treating an n-dimensional system as an um, n-scalar coupled system. And for the communication channel for the vector system, we assume that we have an n-parallel finite red digital channel between each coordinate of the system and controller. And each of them are subject to uh, unknown but bounded delay and also finite data rate. So basically we assume that between coordinate one and coordinate one in the controller, there is a channel and goes like that. And, uh, and if it's not like that, then we, or result, we need to add a log of n bits uh, at the beginning of each packet. If you have a single communication channel to a state that this uh, packet that has been received is for that, that a specific coordinate, maybe coordinate one or coordinate n. Or the another way might be possible that we didn't do it is that to coordinate this with timing, saying that for a while, if I'm going to trick it, it's only going to be for the first coordinate. And maybe after a while for the second coordinate, there should be some way that even for, the, for a single communication channel, you can um, craft such a communication channel that has been discussed above. Mohamed, do you assume, I see, do you assume Jordan Black or Diagon Live? I guess you're going to answer this question. Uh, yes, yeah, yeah. So similar to uh, all the results in the literature, we are going to work with the uh, Jordan Black decomposition, but there is going to be two challenges when, when you do coordinate by coordinate. One of them is this uh, an event triggering. One of them is this off diagonal ones that we need to take care of. And the other one is that this eigenvalue could be complex. And this uh, off diagonal one, we take care in our tag paper with Pavan, Jorge, and Massimo. 2020, that uh, what we do is that we use brown minkowski inequality the, in for the necessary, basically, and the, for the sufficient, the equality case that we could use by uh, designing the encoder and decoder in a proper way. So yeah, so based, based on design and brown minkowski inequality. And the other thing is that you, you can deal with us after diagonal one, yeah. And the other thing is that this could be complex. So. So then we develop a, a extension of this theorem to complex linear system too. So you have the plan, again, x dot equal to axt plus but plus wt. Wt is again uh, bonded disturbance, complex possibly. Uh, and a state is a complex number here, contour input is a complex number. And if you look at the data rate theorem in this context, it just, uh, it just say that the RC, the rate that controller need to receive information should be uh, two times real part of A divided by n of two. So basically here to, if you look at the measure of uncertainty set, uh, you have a complex number, two times its real part is going to capture the growth rate. And as always, we answer that what should be RS, what should be the rate that we are going to transmit just data payload. And so we are going to define this triggering a strategy, which is an extension to complex number, and says that whenever the complex norm of Z is equal to J, when J is the triggering radius, we are going to trigger. So basically in, uh, in the picture, the state estimation error keep growing because the system is unstable. The real part is positive in a spiral, uh, a spiral movement. And then it keeps growing until it hit this radius. And then we send the packet and we ensure that there is enough information in the timing and the packet that ensure that we are going to jump under the 
inside the ball basically inside the ball under the triggering threshold and then uh, since the delay is bonded here zt is always going to be in a bigger ball and then the, in the encoding process we know that uh, if the delay for instance is zero is a small we know that the radius that uh, z was around uh, at that time of the triggering but we don't know its face so when we send the packets we need to do two things one is like before that we had in uh, what we have done in real system scalar that we uh, in our encoding design actually we send a quantized version of the triggering time to the controller uh, we need to put some extra bit here too to it's which for a uniform quantization of the phase at which the cell estimation error hits the triggering signal and if you put this uh, result also in the picture uh, it's going to show the same behavior as a linear system so you uh, plot rate versus the channel with the upper bound. And this red line is fundamental limit for a complex system, two times real part of that uh, open loop gain divided by ln of two. Uh, and you have a result for complex system two. And now if you bring it back here, you have a full picture for complex system when you do coordinate by coordinate analysis. First of all, we, we deal with these ones with Brown Minkowski and some specific uh, tuning. And then you have this uh, complex number. So, so basically you have a full, full picture for a uh, vector system too, when you do a coordinate by coordinate analysis, uh, which is going to be, if you plot all of these RS for all the coordinate for a small value of the delay, all of them are around zero. So basically you can stabilize the vector system in this way too. And when the delay increases, you need to increase the bits. And another, issue that we look at it, it's that you can have exponential convergence. So until now, I just talk about like a threshold base that whenever you pass J or minus J, we are going to transmit the packet. You can look at, at um, exponential convergence when uh, ZT is basically going down exponentially with the rate minus sigma and uh, with the rate sigma and or Z is basically here a state estimation, X is the state, or you can consider the case where the state is going down exponentially. In either case, the fundamental limit, the information access rate will be just RC bigger than A plus sigma divided by ln of two. So A divided by ln of two is the entropy rate of the plant, what we have in data rate theorem. And this sigma uh, accounts for the convergence rate, basically some additional bits that you need if you want to go to zero with some rate. And uh, this actually could be rewritten in some uh, more recent way, the estimation entropy that has been defined by Liberzon and Mitra in 2017, that basically we could say that the information access rate, RC should be bigger than estimation entropy. Uh, yeah, that is defined in this tag paper. Uh, and you can also revisit uh, both time triggering and event triggering. And when, when you want to have an exponential convergence, you want the Z or X state to go down um, exponentially. And then the time triggering would be like before, you just have A plus Sigma, Sigma will be added here. And the event triggering would going to show similar behavior, but at under some assumption for the necessary condition at ln of two divided by A, you are going to get the estimation entropy, not the fun, not the regular entropy. Uh, so this is basically the definition by Liberzon and Mitra. So when, when the delay is ln of two over A, you are going to get back the estimation entropy when you have uh, exponential convergence. And uh, here are a couple of problems that I think it's, uh, that basically we think are already useful for future research. If, if you have event triggering over communication channel, one of them is that uh, until now, I just discussed about the benefit of this timing information that it could bring the bits that you need to send. It could basically uh, somehow beat the data rate theorem just in terms of bits, not in terms of timing information, but it could have, uh, adversarial attacks, uh, adversarial effect too, because an adversary might take advantage of this inherent timing. If an adversary look at 
the times that you are communicating or uh, between your robot, your plant, it could take off some advantage. And this could be in context of differential privacy. This timing information could use uh, could be helpful for the adversary to construct an estimation of your state, as we see. Or it could be helpful for an adversary to learn your dynamics, learn your plan, learn your system dynamics, and co construct uh, learning based attacks. Uh, another extension that I think is uh, very cool is that we have this recent result by uh, Kostina and Hasibi in 19, it's a tag paper, that characterized the rate cost state of in periodic control. So, so basically here we have rate versus control cost. So basically it says that, okay, the cost is here, you need this amount of rate to send. So it's a, basically like a table. And uh, if the control cost tends to infinity, meaning that you don't care about the uh, cost and you only care about the stability, the, the rate that you will have, it's going to be a data rate theorem. And also when the rate tends to infinity, meaning that you can't ask with real numbers, you're going to approach asymptotically, asymptotically to a constant, which is a function of sampling period and system parameter like covariance uh, matrix, covariance matrices of the system. And then you can revisit this work of Costina and Hasibi, I guess in event triggering setup. And just uh, right now, the goal of this talk was to show that uh, if the delay is small, we can go to dates that are, to rates that are below data rate theorem. Yeah, so if the delay is small or delay is sufficiently small, probably we can bring this bond here or arbitrarily close to zero when delay is zero. And also uh, it has been shown in the literature from Himmel's group mainly that if you transmit real numbers over the channel, you don't have any communication constraint, but you just transmit real number with some specific frequency and carefully crafted event triggering policy in that case is going to help you to achieve better uh, constant control cost even uh, in the case that you, you, uh, you transmit a real number. So you can bring probably this bond also to the other side. Uh, and the reason for this intuitively is that when instead of like periodically transmitting, you are going to transmitting carefully so when, when the cost is going to get bad, you are going to transmit more and more and sometimes you don't transmit. And uh, I think these two words could be combined together and we could get new curves here. And if somebody wants to really like kill this problem, I think can add another access to this, which is going to be the delay, then we could have a three dimensional uh, uh, trade off between rate control cost and, and delay. And so we have some extension to nonlinear system too. So we have the dynamic x dot equal to f, uh, xt, ut, and wt. I think here we mainly follow the work of Sharon and Liberzon, attack 2012, and uh, but just revisited in the event triggering case. And we have the bonded disturbance. We have the nonlinear um, dynamic, and we put this locally Lipschitz uh, assumption here that basically says that when we look at the dynamic evolution and look at the dynamic evolution with or estimate of the state, same control input and zero disturbances, you, you are going to have this Lipschitz condition for the state and uh, disturbances. And usually people put this assumption on the nonlinear uh, dynamic when they work on uh, data rectorium, they assume that the system uh, is there is a controller that going to render the system ISS input to a status table, which means that uh, with respect to estimation error and uh, W, which means that you can, there is a controller that could guarantee that within the time the state is upper bonded by an KL function uh, of initial condition and time. Again, this function is going to vanish with time. And then some K infinity function of estimation error ZT, which is zero if the estimation error is zero and keeps growing with ZT. And then um, some again, K infinity function of disturbances. 
So Z here is the estimation error, and this T stands for the supremum of their value over time T. And again, if you look at the nonlinear system, H is the uh, basically the data rectorium for nonlinear system. I think it was Jacobian. Uh, and if you at a specific uh, point in the state, if you if you look at that and you plot it again versus the delay, you could see that uh, you will see the same behavior that you get for linear vector systems. So one extension I think here is that we could look at nonlinear vector system. The other thing is that this assumption has been tried to be relaxed by some Lyapunov criteria or other things for impulsive system in the literature by works of Spanha, Liberzon, Thiel, and others. I think uh, we could probably do this the same thing for uh, event triggering too, to, to see how, how, how things are going to work. And another thing is that, uh, like in like in general, in data rate theorem literature, we always focus mainly focus on the case that we have only a digital channel in the uplink from the sensor to the controller, and people like try to justify it, uh, like us, from a different way that we have a maybe a mobile robot and a weak onboard transmitter from a mobile robot to the central processor. It's expensive, it's going to hurt the battery. So here we are going to have delay, finite data rate, but if this guy is a central processor, he could just transmit a number very close to a real number to all the robots. So basically they, there is no communication channel here. Or the other way people justify it is they say that the controller is co-located with the actuator, but sensor is far away. Uh, and usually people like really benefit this other communication channel in their sufficient design. The necessary is going to hold if, if you have a channel here or not, but for the sufficient, they use this perfect communication channel from the controller to plant to acknowledge the receive symbol to the, to the symbol, to the sensor. Basically when control input could be given to the plant fully, it could serve as a communication tool when the plant is the medium. Uh, so it's whole, the whole area of communication we are controlling input, but I think we need to look more closely at, at least in the uh, event triggering paradigm to, to other channel too, and, uh, and see what's going on because then when the sensor transmit, it need to uh, account for the, not only the delay and quantization in this channel, but maybe in the uh, other channel too, when we have both uplink and downlink channels. And uh, here are some uh, references. So the first one is the book chapter that uh, Massimo, my PhD advisor, I and my postdoc uh, supervisor, Movin, uh, are writing together and it's going to be out soon. It's called Information Flow in Event-Based uh, Control of sub, uh, Cyberphysical System. So it's basically, uh, this talk is based on this chapter. And then these two TCNS and TAC paper and some CDC paper. This one is the, it has the detail of implementation and this one has the uh, time, time trigger result. And thank you very much for your attention and your time.